stand by. We have cold open, pretty much quarter to cold open, and one center with Dana. You're watching News 3, the Southern Illinois News Leader, live from WSIL TV in high definition. News 3 starts right now. A bus crash in Louisiana kills a firefighter trying to help. Plus, a motorcycle wreck in Jackson County leaves two people dead. But first, we've got to pay attention to the message that mom and dad are receiving. SIU focuses on center. making students feel safer in Carbondale. Good evening. Carbondale police are still investigating two separate shootings this weekend that sent two people to the hospital with injuries. The first shooting happened Saturday just after 1 a.m. on the street as officers were conducting foot patrols. Then around 1 p.m., officers were dispatched to Memorial Hospital of Carbondale after a gunshot victim was brought in. No word on when or where that shooting happened. Police records show shootings in Carbondale, ha Carbondale have increased this year. That has administrators at SIU keeping a close eye on student safety. News 3's Tia Reinhardt spoke with Chancellor Brad Colwell about the issue today. Tia, what are some of his concerns? The Chancellor says administrators are doing everything they can to make sure the public knows the SIU campus is safe, regardless of the recent spike in crime. But he says there is always concern prospective students could be skeptical about coming to campus. SIU leaders are working to remind students about the better parts of getting an education in Southern Illinois. SIU Day at the DeCoin State Fair Sunday. Okay, that helped out a lot. Thank you. Readjust your focus. It's really unfortunate when one or two events seem to overshadow you know, some of the, yeah, the, the many positive things that are happening. But even though recent shootings, including an incident Saturday morning on the Strip, did not happen on campus, SIU Chancellor Brad Caldwell says the school is keeping a close eye on student safety. Because obviously we're a community. Up a little Anything bit on that impacts either the community or the university affects the other. The biggest priority for the university, letting students and parents know the administration is monitoring these incidents closely. Unfortunately, you know, we've had a number of calls, you know, over the last six months, and I just have to keep reassuring folks that on campus, our campus is safe, uh, and we will take every step a measure we can. SIU sophomore Jory Bonitor says she isn't worried about the shootings and argues SIU faces bigger issues like the state budget impasse. My first instinct was thinking that maybe the budget was more of an issue um, for people's opinions rather than the time. SIU leaders blame Illinois' unprecedented budget stalemate for a recent decline in enrollment, a trend they hope to change by Ready finding two. ways to draw students to the area and keep them here. The two. chancellor says SIU leadership is working closely with local police departments Ready, to better shot. understand the increase in violence and to get positive messages out about the campus. Live in the newsroom, Ready, Tia Reinhart, News 3. A St. Louis man is recovering from his injuries after crashing his car in Carmi this morning. Authorities say Rodney Taylor was heading west on I-64 when he fell asleep at the wheel. The car veered into the median, overturned, then caught fire. Taylor was taken to a nearby hospital and has been cited with failure to reduce speed. Cape Girardeau police have arrested a man they say led them on a brief high-speed chase Saturday night. Police say 28-year-old Michael Jones fled from officers at a checkpoint. The chase started at the intersection of Main and Park Streets and lasted about three minutes. Jones faces several felony charges for resisting a lawful stop and drug possession. Another hot and muggy day throughout the region. Let's get our first look at weather with Jim. It sure was. Heat index values this afternoon 100 to 105 for many of us. Okay, center one, we'll be back on two key shots. Cooler than that. Saw a little bit of shower and thunderstorm activity, and most of that was in our easternmost counties. I have shifted the view off just a little bit because I wanted you to see, even here late into the evening, quite a bit of thunderstorm activity. And north of Evansville, some very strong storms with a lot of lightning. Watch them very closely, and you'll see that they have a little drift from east to west, backwards to what we normally expect. And we're going to leave a chance for an isolated thunderstorm in the forecast through the next few hours. Maybe some of this energy or even some outflows from some of these storms as they collapse could kick off 
an isolated shower storm here locally uh, later tonight. Skycast uh, really not initializing very well. It didn't have that storm activity, but even with that, shows by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. Again, coming in from the east, a chance of an isolated cell or two. It quiets down in the midday and then again in the afternoon. A couple of more cells showing up as a possibility. So kind of in and out of the chance of isolated storms. Not expecting severe weather, but any of these storms could be very strong with locally heavy rain and gusty winds. Be aware of that. I do see a break in the heat and humidity in the outlook. I'll show it to you in the forecast in just a few minutes. In tonight's court watch, a trial date has been set for a Harrisburg doctor accused of shooting his wife, then burning her body. The jury trial for Brian Burns is scheduled to begin March 22nd of next year. Prosecutors say Brian Burns murdered his wife, Carla Burns, as they were filing for divorce. Brian Burns faces multiple charges, including murder and concealment of a homicidal death. The trial for a Chicago man accused of killing a Jefferson County woman is set to continue tomorrow morning. Police say Stephen Murphy set fire to this home in Mount Vernon back in June of 2015. Tomorrow, Malin was found dead inside. Murphy is charged with first-degree murder and aggravated arson. Three men charged in connection to the shooting of a Carbondale police officer are set to appear in a Kansas courtroom tomorrow morning. The Salina Journal reports 22-year-old Alex Karcher, 22-year-old Xavier McRae, and 24-year-old Xavier Lewis have a scheduling hearing Monday. The three men are accused of traveling to Illinois in an attempt to commit capital murder. Investigators are still trying to determine if one of those suspects shot Officer Trey Harris during a pursuit earlier this month. Now over to Union County. A grassroots organization formed to fight fracking in Illinois gathered in Alto Pass this afternoon to celebrate what they describe as a lack of fracking statewide. News 3's Ronnie LaForge spoke with the group about why they want Southern Illinoisans informed on this issue. Right now, fracking hasn't gained much traction in Illinois. With, and a group uh, safe, the Southern Illinois like against fracking our environment considers that a victory. We want to make sure that people know that just because fracking isn't happening right now doesn't mean it's completely off the table. Members like Tabitha Tripp have worked for two years to make their voices heard. All these little spots are frack sand mines. Today's festival was just another way of spreading their message. And what we want people to do is really reach out to their elected representatives about the issues that are concerning them because if they don't write a handwritten note, um, most likely those petitions you fill out online really aren't getting the point across. They had a booth set up where everyone could write letters to politicians and several stands with information about the dangers of hydraulic fracturing. Business owners like Ken Rood with Little Egypt Beer know how important it is to keep our water safe. The struggle's not over. There could be fracking in the future. We'd like to keep it the way it is, with nice drinking water and our pristine wilderness that we have out here. There are big loopholes in the Hydraulic Fracturing Act that we would like to close down. Although today was more about celebrating, Trip and Rude say their fight isn't over and plan to continue campaigning against fracking. In Alto Pass, Ronnie LaForge, News 3. Thank you. What started as a minor crash in Louisiana turns deadly after a charter bus gets involved. Even more shocking, who was behind the wheel and what he was hauling. The details when News 3 at 10 continues. Take a master.